All right, guys, we're back. We're here to do Married at First Sight, season 16, episode 16. So this is where the couples go on their retreat. And um, I have the videos, you know, down. I think I clipped every scene for this episode because I don't really have much to talk about it. So I wanted y'all to just be able to watch it and make your own, you know, um, decisions about what you think. So the couples are getting ready to go, like I said, on the retreat. That's the first video we have down there. Um, then they are riding in the car. So Nicole is trying to have this conversation with Chris. And he's not having it. He has the nine-month lease that he wants. So he figures he's going to use the time that he needs out of it. And he's just not as pressed as Nicole is, you know, about it. And so we see her frustration being in a car. I don't think she's a, a traveler like that. I don't mind being in a car for travel. But some people can get, you know, can you start feeling kind of closed in. Especially when you're anxious to get, you know, where you want to go. So, um, Eris and Jasmine are talking. And... Jazz, oh, I think she had got like a, a box of cards to go through, like a game for the trip. And he, there was a question, uh, something about who learned the most, or what did you learn, you know, from the other person. And um, she said that she learned the, that reading was uh, something that she needs to really look at from him. And this joker says that he, he has learned how to give it. <laughs> How to give himself grace. Oh, Lord. This boy. <laughs> oh, my God. He's lucky that she thinks he's funny. Because I ain't even going over airs. Okay. So then everybody gets to the um, to the place. And I think Eris and Jasmine got their first. And Nicole and Chris got their last. I actually didn't mind the basement. It looked like they had their own little kitchen and stuff down there, too. So, and maybe the la I wanted to say they had laundry, you know, down there. So, I don't know why. I think she was just grumpy because of the trip. And I do understand um, the importance of wanting to get a good room. But where they were in the house that they picked was already lifted up. That thing is on a pier and beam foundation. So the basement, I really want to know if that was really the basement, if it was just downstairs. So anyway, um, they're getting ready to have this um, contest where the men um, come out and show their stuff. And I was thinking about it. And if you look, if you look in order with the way that uh, the, they won. So Clint was last, then you had Shaq, and then you had Chris, and then you had Eris. So if you have a contest between Eris and Clint, Eris is actually doing better than Clint because he actually has options as to whether or not he can sleep with his wife. Clint has no options. And then you've got Chris and Shaquille who have done better than Clint because they have managed to have sex with their wives. Even if the sex with Shaq is mediocre, he's still having mediocre sex. Okay? He might think it's fantastic and she could think that it's mediocre, you know. He might think he's a man. So then you look, let's see. So, yeah, so Clint is just last. He's just last appropriately. Because I'm still waiting on all this game, you know, that Clint say, you know, that he got. I did feel a little sorry for him, though, when he was, you know, seemed like he was going to have a little anxiety about him and Gina sleeping in the same bed. And she wasn't even tripping about it. So I think he had way more um, energy. And um, I don't know. I just felt a little bad for him. He just really looked like. He wanted to crack the code. He really wanted to be in that club of husbands to have that kind of relationship, you know, with their wives, with his wife. So uh, the contestants. So we had, who was it, came out first? Eris came out first. He looked okay. I mean, that wasn't clean. You know what clean is? Clean is, um, uh, who was it? 
the one of the Wayans brothers, Keenan. Keenan Ivory Wayans in that movie, um, shoot. Um, shame. Low down dirty shame. Child, that boy. Okay, that was clean. Now Eric should have came up in there looking like that. Okay. <laughs> Um, Shaq was nervous. We don't know why. And I didn't think his outfit was that great either. I thought that Chris brought levity to the situation. So he kind of did a half Clint, half Shaq and Ares. He did put on a suit, but he had the hair and, you know, everything. And then Clint just didn't even bother to dress. I don't even know what that was. I hope it was real leather if, you know... Fine, Clint, but he just has none. And Gina says she had to talk him into putting it in a ponytail. <sighs> okay. So anyway, um, who was it? So yeah, it went, I did that because I didn't like what Clint wore on his wedding day. So his choice of clothing, it's just, he had, yeah. So anyway, they went to the questions, and I didn't like Eris' answer at all, because even Jasmine said at the beginning that they should pick, they should score them not based on just what they say, but that if they mean what they say. And Eris is real good about telling the truth that he don't plan on living. Okay, and this is why Jasmine's finna get disappointed again, because he's sitting there doing this whole you know, self-flagellation. Yeah, I've been bad. Oh, my God. I got to treat my wife better. Oh, she's just that and the third. And, oh, I got to do it. And I got to. And not, come on, Ares. We're not playing. I'm not playing that game with you or Kirsten. So, um, and then I'm moving ahead a little bit, but. When they go back to the hotel room, Carson is sitting there talking like, yeah. And there was this one uh, guy, he was talking about this, that, and the third. And Shaq was like, that was me. That was, that was me. So it's like, I think when Shaq starts talking, she just stops listening. And I don't know. It, and by now, I think it's automatic. Even if she wanted to sit there and listen to him. I think she's trained herself just to stop listening <laughs> when he's talking. And then she says what she thinks she needs to say in response to him. And that's part of where their communication is coming from because she's not listening to understand the points that he's trying to make to her. And they go in one ear and fly straight out of the other one. So I don't know. Um, so anyway, Eris ends up, like I said, winning. And you should go down and look at the video. Child, this Joker. <sighs> this Joker. And when he stuck out his leg, so <laughs> when he stuck out his leg so that she could, um, what was it? Put lotion on oh, this boy. He make my head hurt. Oh, man, I hope this girl say no on decision day. Okay. And um, where are we? Yeah, when I listen to Eris, he really makes me sad. He really makes me sad because he could be a better man. So, Clint wanted to play with the Bears. Shaq and them looking at him like, okay. What they call him? Some people call him um, Chuck Norris. They call him the Brownie, the Brownie Man. Um, Smokey. He got some relationship to Smokey. Only you can stop... Only you can prevent forest fires. And that's actually not true. That's not true. Because you have lightning that uh, starts forest fires sometimes. So we've been listening to Smokey Bear all these years, and he's lying to us too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So Okay, so they went on excursions. Uh, Kirsten and Shaq went on this ice slide. Jasmine and Ares went to a gym. And they kind of did this rock climbing kind of thing. And Clint and Gina went on this kind of like roller coaster kind of thing. And they were talking after. And they were, they were mixing up their metaphors because he was saying that their, their life, their relationship is like the roller coaster. They've had a lot of ups 
and the downs. But then he was like, but wait a minute, our downs haven't been fun. But when you come to do the downs on the roller coaster, that's the most fun. And the up is the slowest, longest, most boring part, you know, of the of the ride. So I don't think they got that metaphor right um, on that one. And we learned a new word, undulation. Clint said it was like more of a spiky up and down. But when I actually looked up the word, it said a gentle up upward and downward, you know, motion, like a waves. I thought about waves when um, I read the definition. But go ahead, Clint. I love learning, you know, new things. So I, I was impressed that he taught me a new word. Go ahead, boy. And so we got uh, Eris and Jasmine. They were talking. Um, they, they, they actually had a pretty long section, you know, down there. I don't know why Eris was disappointed his wife beat him. In the little um, um, rock thing that they were uh, climbing. Just, you can't win everything, Eris. Get over yourself. And um, I thought their conversation, I really, I just put Jasmine and Eris because it was just a conversation. So I really don't have anything too positive or too negative, you know, to say about it. So I invite you to go and um, look at that video, you know, as well. Um, they had an 80s party. Apparently, Clint and Nicole were born in the 80s, and maybe their birthdays are, like, within the same month. So they combined their birthdays, and um, Eris had to leave. He wasn't able to stay to the party because he said that he had to work commitment that he wasn't able to cancel so jasmine looked out sad girl pick yourself up and go in there and have a good time and let eris be eris but i know when you caught up you know your feelings are caught up and stuff you can't move like you want to like when you're not connected to somebody you do whatever look wild hair be like oh, okay yeah what's going on here but let's let's check out this no your body don't get to function like that when you're, you know, like I said, caught up. So I, I really do. My heart goes out, you know, to her. So Nicole, poor baby. You know I love Nicole. Girl, Nicole, I do appreciate she did balance out her conversation. You know who's going to have to hear tragedy, Nicole. But then she said um, how she uh, really was thankful you know, for this birthday, the birthday that she had, you know, now that she's been on the show and she found Chris and and all of that. So we shall see how this mess goes. I still see um, Kirsten Gaslight and Shaq when they were up there talking. She still, oh, we still have a communication problem. You know why we got a communication problem, Kirsten? Because you keep, you're living a double life. Okay, you got Shaq over here on this string, and then you got your real life. <laughs> you got your real life that you've been having to juggle for the past eight, seven weeks. And you can't keep them two things straight in your head. I know it sounds like you'd be able to do it on paper, but when you're actually trying to get it manifested, it's hard because you got this man over here trying to pour into you and trying to get stuff out of you so he can make a decision about decision day. You won't let him meet your family. You run around telling people that um, you ain't attracted to him the whole time you're having sex with him. Then you send up lying to me. If y'all go back and look at that um, on last week's episode where he was still crying about Memphis and he got up from the table, she told him that she had rubbed his back and she rubbed his leg while he was telling, you know, his... Um, his his story about how he had to work out, you know, some, some mental health issues, you know, for himself. If you go and you look at her, her arm did not move. I made it a point, and I forgot to talk about that last time. So she sent out that gaslight to him, talking about, I rubbed your leg and I rubbed your back. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. And don't let people do that to you, because I'm, I'm around these kind of people way more than i want to well you know i just heard about the fire no you didn't just hear about the fire i sent you an email when it happened so no well you're not in uh-uh child no 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 
I understand. I'm not, you know, as important to you as some other people, you know, are. So, yeah, no, I know the handful of people that I go, you know, and tell that, you know, to the day it happened. So, anyway, yeah, don't let people gaslight you. And that's just what she's doing. Same thing with Eric. When uh, Jasmine, when he found out that Jasmine was gone, he ran out there and was telling her about the dance instructor. Oh, well, she's not even my type. Nick, ain't nobody trying to sit up and talk about that woman as your type. Jasmine was mad at you because you weren't interested in dancing with her. This instructor shouldn't have had time to come over and ask you to dance because you should have been out there dancing with your wife like the rest of the couples you know were doing. That's why she was mad at you, Eris. Oh, my goodness. Whew, Lord. Okay. So, is that it? Is that the... Okay, so we're looking at the after party. I love that um, Rudy called out Gina. You know, Dr. Pepper called her out, too. And she was like, oh, cooking is Clint's thing. And she's like, okay, you can cook a meal or two. I mean, for something, get a man a break. When he walk in the door, greet him with some food wafting in the air. Like, you know, you would expect him, you know, to do for you. You can do this, Gina. And, um, yeah, like I said, I put that down there that, um, that Rudy called her out. So go check that out. I don't know who this guest was that she had. I didn't like the... Little title that she said she was going to have for them at the end. I've never heard of her before, but I've heard of Bossip. So, Danny Canada, I think that's her name. Anyway, so Jasmine was there, and um, she, she said that she was cool with Eris leaving because it gave her an opportunity, you know, to miss him. I guess they've been concentrated in this experiment, you know, for all these weeks that... That was like a, a moment of, uh, what is this absence makes the heart grow fonder? Is that it? Okay. And, okay, so um, they showed the scene. I think they showed one of the scenes when the couples were talking around the table and cursing time out. I, need, I still need grace. I, I need some, you giving out grace cursing? I mean, I, ain't, I haven't heard you giving Shaq no grace, especially when it's, when you got to the point where you want to, I want time. I want time. Well, I'm going to get some time. I, he ain't giving me no time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. This girl. Oh, anyway. So, um, everybody, you know, was all impressed that Eric said something nice, you know, to Jasmine. He's not going to do anything. He's going to sit there and tell all kinds of truth. And then when he get back home, he has the propensity to just turn around and start acting crazy, you know, again. So I hate it when her hopes, you know, are, um, are lifted. And just to see that, you know, because you, you just know what Eris is. So Clint and Gina. Gina was saying that. She's not interested in staying married to anybody that's a friend. She wants a husband. But Jasmine pretty much said the same thing in previous episodes. So, looks like Gina and Clint are not going to make it for decision day. I still think Shaq is going to say yes. If Kirsten says yes, then she's going to do it to torture Shaq. I mean, I can't see why she would do that. I really honestly cannot. And he realizes he needs to be glad that she didn't go with him to Memphis. Because the way that she dropping bombs and, 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 and dimes and stuff out on him, um, she could have been in front of his friends and stuff and his colleagues just embarrassing him. Like she finished embarrassing him on national television. You know, by saying that he's not masculine. So... I mean, he was all upset about that, but that actually could have been a blessing for him in, dis you know, um, in disguise, especially with the news that he wouldn't be graduating on time. He wouldn't have needed her to be there to make things worse uh, for him with her mouth. So um, I didn't think this after show was that great. We're looking at scenes from next week. Apparently, they're still going to be at the retreat. I don't know if I've seen them have a retreat this long before 
So that's interesting. And I figured that Kevin Frazier would have had a show by now, you know, and prolong the season. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen unless they're going to do it after decision day. I don't know. But um, I think that's it, guys. So it's been a lot going on. I'm not feeling that well. And I'm um, still trying to get into this apartment. I had to go to my burned out apartment the other day. And it's a mess in there. Somebody has been in there. And somebody has been in my apartment. The, there is no door on my apartment. So anybody could just walk back and forth in there and just do, you know, whatever. And so it's more work now that I have to do. And I still have to um, go through with this insurance. It's just, it's a mess. And it's, you know, last night I had a moment. I was real, you know, I was down. I was down. So if y'all got a prayer for me to kind of keep me buoyant, keep my head above this water, I would appreciate it. And uh, I think that's it. And I will see y'all for episode number 17.